Where I want to spend our few minutes today is on that young man that you saw a second ago. You don't know he. Y'all talking to him like he's a family member. Oh, you know, Uncle Pinks. <laughs> In the English rendition, is Red Phineas. I've heard us say it as Pinkus. How did you say it? Phineas. 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 However, in Hebrew, it's neither one of those. Yeah, it messed me up. I was really ready to say, I like Pincus, but it's not Pincus in Hebrew. It's Pinhas. Pinhas. And the accent is on the second syllable. It didn't really have that look ugh, that I wanted, but it's the way it sounded. I could pull it up for you and do a um, phonetic if, if you need convincing. But this man's story I found exceptional. There's some things in this story that kind of shook me and I kind of wanted to stay away from because I'm thinking it's going to take a little time. And there's some things here that um, that uh, need to be said. And I think will encourage you, hopefully um, encourage you, challenge you, um, inspire you. It has me. Pincus. I may say Pincus. I'm sorry. It just sounds fun because I've gotten so yeah, used to it. It's a pin has. It may be a ch at the end of pin It has to be, a, if it's a ch, it's a ch. Yeah. Pin Yeah. Pin Which sounds kind of like has, but with a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attitude. <laughs> that, that's how I was viewing it, too. So I'm going to use it that way. I want to look at this man's story and everything surrounding it because it's so powerful. I think there's some lessons here as an individual, personally, personally, but also as a small community that we can learn from. Let me go back a little bit and read in chapter 25, verse 1. It says, Now Israel remained in the Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of Yahweh was aroused against Israel. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the officers before Yahweh. Yahweh was hot. Take all the Israel, all the leaders of the people, and hang the offenders before Yahweh out in the sun that the fierce anger of Yahweh may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. There was no place for a discussion. It was just kill these men. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now Pinhas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it. He rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. And those who died in the plague, 24,000. 24,000. That's a lot to bury in a few days. If we were to pause to get the context of what's going on, I would have loved to get a snapshot of just the, the environment, the scene of all that's going on. We got a plague that's happening in real time right now. We have leaders who are in real time committing harlotries with Moabites, bowing down to the gods. We have those who are weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Look at all this stuff going on right now. Get that all in one picture. People are weeping at the door of the tabernacle because of all that's going on. And in the midst of it all, you have a man who brings a Midianite. 
It says, in the sight of Moses, in the sight of the congregation, to the tabernacle of meeting. Uh, Jay. I'm looking at this with several different things. I'm not sure if there's any scripture that will really back up my thinking on that. Uh, if we look at that plague and compare it to, let's say, just any type of sexual disease on that, just think of it as that. We see that, whether it be an AIDS or a venereal disease or whatever, that you know, we killed off well more than 24,000 with AIDS on that, and then who knows how many with other types of diseases. This time period was the next piece I was kind of looking at. Uh, you're drawing a good picture of, of what's going on, but how much time from the time that they started having these women in to the time that uh, how do you pronounce it? Pinhas. Pinhas mm -hmm. actually did this that stopped the plague. Yeah. It was this, you know, where people were dying of this plague slowly, or did it happen immediately? Mm -hmm. I don't really see that time frame in, in Scripture. Which it would be nice if we could kind of mm -hmm. add that layer of dimension to it. Yeah. So. No, that's a good point because I kept looking between chapter 24 and chapter 25 and there, we're missing something. <laughs> because you come to chapter 25 and we're in the middle of a plague. We're like, what happened? What's going on? We were talking about daily offerings and our, what? So some time has passed, um, Tom. Was it really a plague? Or was it Moshe, or Adam and I said to Moshe, take all the chiefs of the people and hang them? And then everyone who was joined themselves to Balpior was to be put to death? Is that the 24,000? No. That doesn't sound like a plague, really. It's the plague of, this is my justice. You're to put these people to death. No, there was a plague. So at the last sentence here, so the plague was stopped among the children and 24,000 were, were killed. So there was something going on during that whole time. So is the 24,000 those who board with Balpior or is the 24,000 those plus others? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> Just it was the children of Israel. Yeah. And how would we think uh, Ben was? Yeah, I thought about that question because we asked that last year. Um, because, but no, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get into it to figure out. Aaron's grandson, Aaron, was uh, eighty-three or so. And then got Eleazar. Didn't we already have the death of Aaron? Was he still alive? Yeah, Aaron's. I think out yeah, at this point. But you can think of Moses. <laughs> well, I take that back. Moses was 120 when about this time in, in that range. So Aaron would have been way up there. So, uh, Chaos could actually be relatively, you know, fairly old then. Mature. Mature. <laughs> <laughs> you start using different language as you. Well, you know, mature would fit the fact that he don't he understands of God's. True. You know, disapproval of this. Right, right, right. So what makes what makes this story so exceptional? Who gets rewarded for killing. Yeah. But he did it for the right reason. Yeah, yeah. And there's some things before this, I'm gonna get to that reward at the toward the end here. But there's some things here that caught my attention as well, which is the, 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 the man who brought the Midianite woman. How brazen. In the midst of all that's going on. And it made a point, the narrator says, in the sight of Moses. Who was Moses married to? Mm-hmm. 
His wife was a Midianite. <laughs> in the sight of Moses, not just Moses, and in the sight of the, all the congregation, knowing that this was not acceptable. And right before that, he presented to his brethren. I mean, this is like a show. What should be done in secret on a hush hush is actually being paraded on stage in front of Moses himself and the whole congregation. And look, guys. Hey, family, uncle. Look. Brazen. With all that going on. My question that gave me pause here is why didn't others do what Pinhas did? It wasn't that nobody knew. Anybody could have had the opportunity to receive a blessing from the Most High. Moses didn't move. The congregation didn't move. You asked how long. This wasn't just a day. This had been going on for some time. It's clear that this is not just a happenstance of a moment, but nobody moved. Do you think that that man that came with him was the first one to do it publicly like that in his face? No, and I'm so glad you said that because in order for someone to do that, there has to be a certain culture that's being created that makes that acceptable. Which brings us back to Balaam and Balak. It's exactly what Balaam and Balak did. They, they cursed the Israelites with the Midianite women. That's what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing the fruits of that over time. So when we go back to that story, we see that this thing played out. There was a whole lot going on. But now we have a culture in which someone can brazenly walk in front and say, what, but, are we, what, what, are you, what do we see today in our nation? Oh, well, that's what I'm about to talk about. Yeah, just say it, just say it. They said at the gay parade pride, uh, gay parade, gay pride parades, that they're doing sexual things and stuff. Mm. But, they're they, in the middle of it. But here's what our... what they did at the White House. Who is they? The LGBTQ. President Biden. Oh, but it was in. It, 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 they it, came they, somewhere. In their party. 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 Had, yeah. And all the men that had had, had their breasts surgically installed, they were ripping their shirts off on the White House lawn, just shaking themselves. Now let's take that situation. Let's take that situation. And juxtapose it in what it looks like for today. Where would you find mm -hmm. such lewdness and audacity in their time? At the temple? Only in the this, this took place at the tabernacle. Okay. So I'm talking about, we look, take a look at the whole world, the wherever you want to go. Where would you find such, that's equivalent in their time? Such audacity and brazenness and lewdness and um, their, their time mm -hmm. uh, with Lot. So we see that with Lot, absolutely. I don't know, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Celebrations of yeah. Ishtar every spring. That's yeah. That was supposed to be real. <clears throat> yeah, we just came out of it. Now they're trying to get it for a year. Yes, I know. Well, they tried it. They made a month of it. Now. Yeah. So and here's where I want to go with this. That's Sheetum. Sheetum. This is where it was? Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, is your question, where is it now? Or was it yeah, we're talking about s strange things that's happening in 2023. Strange, it's weird, like, crazy, yeah. obnoxious, and abominable things. And I ask the question as we go back to our text, where in the world is something like that comparable? Like, where would you go to find something comparable to what we see today? Right there. Sodom and Gomorrah. And where is this? Not far from the town. Ashitim. Yes. Ashitim. With who? In front of Moses and... 
in front of the Holy of Holies. Yes. They went into the Holy of Holies. I don't know that there's a comparable place here. What kind of people were doing this? Wicked. Their own brothers. Their own brothers. Yes. Yeah. I don't care if they're brothers. They're still wicked. She was a Midianite lady. All right, so I'm gonna come back to that because I think that's simple. Why don't others? Why didn't others do anything? Why is Pinhot Pinas? Why is he getting the credit? Why is he? What about everybody else? Moses stood. He could have said, "Hey, stop that." The congregation, anybody could have stood up and said, "No, we would not stand for this." Why do people stand? If I had a title to put on this, it would be, "Don't just stand there." It's what we have in 2023. The Christian church is quiet. Wow. They they're mind afraid. their own business. They're afraid to get, they yeah, don't want to make any scene for themselves. Yeah. So I'll offer us a few reasons. And who would think of killing somebody? I, that would really be an unusual thing. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So let me offer a few. Maybe people didn't do anything because maybe some had the attitude that nobody told me to do anything. The sheeple attitude. Nobody told me to do anything. I asked the question, where would you find a community in this time that we're reading, like the one you're talking about that we see in the quote unquote world today? And the where place you will find it is among God's people. Exactly. It wasn't in Egypt. It wasn't in Babylon and it wasn't in Persia. It was right there in front of Moses, right there in front of the temple of God. I would have never thought to look there. But here we are. Here we go again. It, it could be in the redneck group. Jay. <laughs> College professor was avid atheist and atheist and active at the ACLU. Was teaching his class, he shocked several of the students when he flatly stated that once and for all, he was going to prove there is no God. Addressing the ceiling, he shouted, God, if you're real, then I want you to knock me off this platform, and I'll give you 15 minutes. The lecture room fell silent. You could hear a pin drop. Ten minutes went by. I'm waiting, God. You're real. Knock me off this platform. Again, after four minutes, a professor taunted God and says, Here I am, God. Still waiting. He counted down to the last couple of minutes when a Marine who was just released from the Marines after serving in Afghanistan and Iraq, newly registered into the class, walked up to the professor. The Marine hit him with full force in the face. This said, the professor tumbling from off the platform. So the professor was out cold. The student stunned and shot and began to babble in confusion. The Marine nonchalantly took his seat in the front row and sat silently. The class looked at him and fell silent, also waiting. Eventually, the professor came to and noticed. Noticeably shaking, he looked at the Marine in the front row, and then the professor regained his senses and could speak and ask, What the hell's the matter with you? Why'd you do that? The Marine answered, God's really busy protecting American soldiers who are protecting your rights to say stupid and act like a so he sent me. <laughs> sent him to knock him out. Amen. I haven't heard that one. So his uh, first name was Phineas. <laughs> <laughs> the same spirit. While others didn't do anything, nobody told me to. I like to invite us to see God's community for what it is. You're going to find God's community in Lubbock. You're going to find God's community in Lubbock. You're going to find God's community in Texas. You're going to find his community throughout America. You're going to find it throughout the UK. 
in Australia, throughout France. Matter of fact, if you were to ask Yahweh, I believe he would say, this is my nation of people. And within that nation, my question here is, where is Pinhas? It's it would be easy for me to look outside of this nation and say, look how worldly the world is. But within this nation, within with just the Israelites and Moses, we have a community of people who have one law and one God. Yet sin was living right there. Has everyone looked out for the Babylonians and the Egyptians and all that? Right here, we have some of the most lewd and atro atrocious things happening. Why? One of the reasons is because nobody told me to do anything. And I wonder, how many times have I turned a blind eye because of that excuse that I've said in my head? Nobody told me to say anything. I see that brother or sister. I see this situation. Nobody said anything to me. Where's Pinhas? That's not my job. Oh, I've said it. You may have too. That's above my pay grade. That's for one of those leader type people. Hold on. Okay, that's for somebody else. <laughs> I want to deflect this. This is not me. Have you ever seen something and found a reason not to? I wonder what Moses, why Moses didn't say. I wonder why the congregation didn't say. I wonder why all the other tents didn't say. Because it's hard to thrive in a community of lights. Darkness can't live very long. All you got to do is turn all the lights on. And it's hard to live. But, but they were silent. Some are people pleasers and simply do not want to upset somebody else. That's exactly how we got here today. Who is we? Our nation. What nation? The United States of America. And that's not the one I'm talking about. It's the one, well, we're Israel. So We're it, part of Israel. We are not, not America. Yes, we are. The people of God are. Words. We, we stood up and said, well, we don't, we, we don't want to offend them. That's how we got into all I, it, It's very important. Garbage that we're involved yeah, it's very important. You're hearing me say on this place over and over again. We cannot align, our, align ourselves with this country or any other because we are a country in ourselves. He put us here. And he raised this nation up. When he when when. The 13 colonies were formed. It's in a Declaration of Independence. Book, it's chapter, a, and verse. <laughs> and, and a follow for Brandon Cohen, and uh, it comes with respect to quite well on this because, you know, we're, we live in Lowell, we live in Texas, we live in the United States, you know, this is our country. That's really not the nation. No. Being God's nation. But we're a part of his nation. That's what I call first things first. And then, you know, it's okay. If I'm in God's nation, then I can be in the United States and be an American, and I can be in Texas and be in Texas, and I can be, you know, I can do all that. I've got to be there first. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Although Yeshua was a Nazarite, he did not uptake Nazarite patriotism. Although he was in Israel, he was not going to say, this is what the government of it. He says, I am in Israel, but from another country, and I represent a whole other country. How? You're already here. No. And he's invited us to be a part of that. Why don't others speak? Don't want to upset others. Have you ever seen sin or something that doesn't look right, but I don't want to rock the boat? If you have, then you join Moses and the congregation in your silence that promotes the continuation of that practice. This lesson is asking, where is Pin um, Pinhas? I want to say Pincus, because I've gotten so used to saying it. Where is Pinhas? And you see the blessing that follows after it says, thank you for being zealous when nobody else would. It's as if God was waiting for a man or a woman to stand up and do something and say something to us, to each other. You see it, say it, stand up. 
<laughs> Another reason I was main signed, I won't tell yours if you won't tell mine. It's a fancy word called we're in cahoots. It's this silent nodding of the head. Well, I agree to turn your head if you agree to I turn mine if you turn yours. So you're saying it's because I don't I'm not better than them because I still sin too. You I'll say again. You're saying that the, that person says I can't say anything because I'm not perfect either. I sin. Correct. This will come from one of the men who has a wife from media. <laughs> from media, not, I'm not going to say nothing because I see you you got going on there. This comes from somebody who may not have the wife, but they have another thing that I'll keep your thing secret. If you keep my thing secret, this happens a lot in close relationships. It's a good old boy policy. And that makes it really tight because I know your stuff and you know mine and we just going to I'm not You're talking Democrats and smile. Republicans now. <laughs> I'm talking brothers and sisters. I don't know what each other's doing. I'm talking brothers and sisters. There are brothers and sisters who see sin in each other but remain silent because they see the same sin in themselves and they do not want to simply ask the question, how are you doing? Because they know by asking, that question is going to come back. So I'll remain silent so that you don't ask me to. I think number two and three are probably more used than any. That's not my job. That's their business. That's not mine. And I don't want to upset people. I want people to still not not look down on me because I speak up and tell people what they're doing wrong. I, today, I say that. Yeah. Mm. Right. You know, they're free white 21. They have a right to make their own choices. I, that's not my business. I have to take care of me and not look at other people. Right. Because but, it comes back to that one. I'm a sinner too, so. Yeah. yeah. And they don't want to be a judge. Yeah. That's about my right to judge. Absolutely. Yeah. And what I want to do in this time is shift the they to me, I, and us. Because I believe that God is more concerned about his people showing up for each other than we are about diagnosing how others are doing. And we'll see that in the text today. Lastly, others may not have said anything because they say, I'm not sure what Yahweh thinks about this. I don't want to kill nobody. Yeah. Going back to Jade's thing about, do you know Yahweh? The one who really knows Yahweh says, I know he ain't going to stand for this. I don't need another scripture. I don't need another law. I'm about to handle this business here. <laughs> <laughs> but it still says that God loves a sinner. He doesn't love their sin, but he loves them. Amen. So go back to the top ten, don't murder. People look at those things too. I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, me too. I, I mean, don't know, I don't know that I could have gone and Right. So what I'm saying to us today is that this is a lesson and a, and a, a example of what happened how did they get here? They got here from a lot of people remaining quiet, regardless of the reason. And I believe it's a warning for us in this room, in our community in Lubbock, however you want to see it, make sure that this doesn't happen in your community. Because it went on for a while where everybody says, that's just a little thing. It started as small, I'm sure, but no one said anything. This is not the only time. That you see this uh, dynamic, um, Leah? I was just going to ask: Is it does stand, does standing in a up in a group of people who are objecting to something that's being done? They don't kill anybody or anything like that, but they do stand up and make it known that they do not agree with that. And they don't want that in their community. Does that count as part of something that? Is a reaction to that. The, the, the one that I'm talking about is very basic and simple. And I'm not saying yes or no to that necessarily, but if you see a brother or sister who is in sin. Oh, in other words, in the body. In the body. Because that's what they, we're talking about here. This is okay. the whole body of uh, not like Yahweh. the whole community or the whole yeah. state. Because I think, Leah, that's, that's very convenient. And when we do that, we do a good old boy, but boy policy that says we're all good, those people. And that way we never address each other because we're all like, yeah, we're pretty good. We're doing great. Those guys. And what happens? I never ask you how you doing. How are you doing? Where you been? What's going on? How you feeling about that? What's, I noticed it. Oh, we're, we're just doing. No, no, no. So that's I think Yahweh's focus is I want my people to be with unpolluted. 
This is not the only time in this story that this has happened in God's community. I'm just thinking on God's community right now for this lesson. In God's community, we see in 1 Corinthians 5, we know the story is a very popular one. A man has his father's wife in the church. How does this happen? Like we gave some reason a second ago. It is actually reported there is sexual morality among you. Man, those worldly people, those governments. No, you, Church of Corinth. <laughs> well, you'd think God would have struck them dead when they were doing something like that in his temple. Look what he did to the to, uh, the Levites, the two Levites, the sons of, of um, anything was Aaron. Aaron, he struck them dead. You know, I mean, this makes sense to me. Good job, Thank yeah, God you think so that to me. <laughs> I'm going to say, be careful. <laughs> he's, testing, he's testing his people. Yeah. He did well, get 24,000. So. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> what, Jay? He did get 24,000 of them in the plague oh, he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he just hadn't got to those two. Yeah. He got to those two, I guess. And the truth of the matter is that God has put us in each other's lives. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. Where is God? I, see, we, that's not my job. That's it. No, no. You're your brother's keeper. And, and I'm hoping to show that as we read here. It's actually reported there's sexual morality among you and such sexual morality as not even a main, among the Gentiles. You're talking about the Gentiles. They don't even got this kind of stuff. In the church, we got to wake up, brothers and sisters. I wish this message can go out across the nation because since we don't look within, so much can happen that we don't see that comes out in the news that comes out in small corners and stories because nobody expects it to happen in this community this don't even happen in the gentiles that the ones you're talking about they got more sense than that they're embarrassed at this idea that a man has his father's wife and you're puffed up you're proud about it and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I indeed was am, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have already judged as though I were present. Him who has so done this deed in the name of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Joy. He says, you're waiting. He says, no, you deliver that one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Nobody does. This is church. We, we don't know how he says, no, get that guy. Same as Old Testament out of the community. You'll be cut off. That's not nice, though. You know how people are going to feel about it? They got a family and this is going to He said, no, you cut off. We don't do that. That is. Spirit may be saved in the day of Yahweh, Yeshua, of the Lord Yeshua. Your glorying is not good. They're glorying in it. I, I don't know what they were saying. Grace, mercy. Guys, you got to understand. You know, it's uh, there's. How do we get here? Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? I'm saying this, brothers and sisters, to brothers and sisters, not to the politicians, not to the Democrats and, and Republicans, not to Americans, but to the believers of God's community. It's time, it's, where is Pinhas in his community? Men or women? Um, uh, I've known of two churches that tried to stand firm about God's um, instructions about one in particular, where you don't get remarried unless your your, your wife dies and then you're free to marry somebody else. And they would not allow the person who didn't fit that standard and they got remarried, they were excommunicated out of their church. And everybody that hears the stories thinks, you know, that's just terrible. And it's so sad. Well, today we have them embracing homosexuality, and they're on board with this transgender thing. And, I mean, the churches have, they're trying to become this, uh, it's the one at Bill Cloud, he just hates the sticker, the one that says coexist. It's got all the different denominational symbols and stuff. And that's kind of where the church has become. And what you're asking us to do is to stand separate and stand firm and not blend in and become like <clears throat> that's kind of what you're kind of <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that that message comes through. Don't just stand there. Moses stood there. The congregation stood there. The tents of people and other leaders stood there. Whatever their reasons, they stood there. 
I can't help what happens in Commerce, Texas. I can't help what happens in Laredo. But for these people here and for Raya or whoever else God gives me the influence to be, or whoever tunes in, for those people he's put on my spirit, you do have a responsibility and, I, and you need to speak this. And don't just stand there, Brandon. Don't just stand there, insert name, <laughs> whatever. Don't just stand there. I don't care how loud or quiet, big or small, significant or otherwise you feel. He says, don't just stand there. Um, they purge, therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you are truly unleavened. Please, brothers and sisters, get this through, that this is not talking about the community we live in. It's talking about the nation who we are we're connected to, which is God's people. In Revelations, you hear a lot of this language, too. Did you know those were churches there? These were believers there? I'm not talking about, again, we'll leave the world to the world. We're going to just talk about us for a minute, just the people of God. And he says, um, but I have a few things against you. What did he have against this community, this particular church? He says, you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. Why are you holding that against me? That's what they hold. Who taught Balak to put a stumbling block for the children of Israel to eat the sacrifice, to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual morality? Thus you have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things, which thing I hate. Repent. Hello. Um, well, there are those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. There are those who held the doctrine of Nicolaitans. But why are you telling me? Why would he be telling them? He's talking to the whole church. He's talking to the leadership as well. Probably because there was something in the church that there are some things in his, the church he's trying to address. I believe that Yahweh holds the church accountable for the sin that's in that community. Oh, my goodness. That's why this one bothered me. He says, you know, and you hold in, you, 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 you have there those who dot, dot, dot. And we can point and finger and those people do that. And then he says, no, I'm talking about you. I'm not going to judge you about what that group did. But in your group, you hold these things. What group, what things in my group am I turning a blind eye to? If anything, I want to say nothing. Everything's great. But if there is something, he says, be faithful and speak or I'll hold you accountable. Another time he says in verse 20, he says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual morality and eat things sacrificed. I, I gave her a time to repent of her sexual morality and she did not repent. And he goes on, but he says, you allowed it and I'll hold you accountable because you've allowed sin to run amok in your community. Yeah, it's very <clears throat> interesting because Jezebel went back, what, from the time of John writing the book of Revelation, she probably went back, what, 1500, 2000 years, maybe? Mm -hmm. Somewhere. How'd she end up over here? And here he is talking about, oh, you got Jezebel in there with you, you know? What did Jezebel do? Who was she? And who is our modern day Jezebel? It's a serious, it's a serious question. Hmm? It's a serious, there's a spirit of Jezebel. You bet there is. You, yeah. didn't die. She was a Phoenician. Yeah, that's what Jay was talking about. You can keep giving the spirit. <laughs> they lose it. They, they just, as they, as they come forward, they just change their names. They do the same things. They just change their names. Yeah. So what we have to do is make sure we're aware and we're catching that. All right. So in our community, in my personal life, in my own family, <clears throat> While I teach and preach, he says, I hold this against you. You have you're allowing something that you're not dealing with. And I hold you accountable for that. Um, Jay, did I see your hand go up? OK. I don't know. Yeah. Did you have your hand up? Uh, well, for one, the earth that I was referring to 
question thank you how can we be more accountable so that in our community we can as Paul mentioned purge or encourage where it needs to be there's two things um, we have to ask the questions that's hard to ask simply could be how you doing brother how you doing sister or if there's something that's clearly evident can I talk to you about something that I see I think it starts with being accountable for ourselves first. Make sure that we don't have anything like that in our lives. That's such a good point, Leah. That's a good principle that Yeshua taught us, right? Plank. Explain it. Yeah, good. We bring our own test a lot of times. We justify Well, we have that over all those excuses you had up there. Mm -hmm. We'll pick one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And a more, even more mature, Jay, would be to have the, take the initiative and invite um, transparency. Get to know each other. Jay, what do you see in me that doesn't look like Yeshua? Whew, you want to you, you wanna grow? Mm -hmm. Start, what do you see in me? And Jay might be off. But I need to consider. Could you imagine, though, the way that that would make people feel? Oh, no. <laughs> Just ready for anything. Anytime anybody comes up to you, oh, really picks up. <laughs> yeah, but you know what kind of community that creates? All right? You know what it guards against? You know what can't thrive in a community like that? You know what can't thrive? Sin. That kind of sin. Because you're looking for that type of transparency and saying, like, I can't operate here because everybody's trying to either get in their lives or open themselves up to like, yeah, I just want to make sure because I can't grade my test. I can't see myself. Is there anything in me? You know, like the prayer Psalms, um, search me, O oh God. Yeah, search me, O oh God. And you let God search you through a brother and sister. And you say, please use so-and-so in. -and -so let me hear. And just remember, everybody's not perfect. It may not come out, but I'll, you're like, I don't care. I just want to hear if there's something. It would still have to be somebody that you respect and you have a good relationship with that you would trust. You, you, you know what I'm saying? It don't have to be. Just anybody could. It would help. You know, if you, <laughs> I'm saying you would receive that better. It would help. But if you're very mature, it depends on your maturity. The more mature you are, You'll look past all that and you'll say, I thank you for the, that data, that information. But if you can't, you're right. You're like, okay, let me just start here on the level because I need to make sure. I, I, I'm not saying I'm there. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be. Jay? Uh, pretty much answered. Okay. Um, we have, uh, this is not the only time it happened. Remember King Josiah? Um, Josiah was unlike anyone else, it says. It says, now before him, there was no king like him. What did Josiah do that no other king like him did? Anybody remember that story? He cleaned, the temple. He cleaned all that stuff up. How did it get like that? This is the temple of God. How did you get literally millions of people possibly, at least hundreds of thousands, and nobody says, stop this craziness? How did it get to the point where we're all just sitting around accepting the abomination of God's temple? It happens before you realize it. You look up and you have someone come in and shake things up. You're like, oh, my goodness, what have we been doing? You have a King Josiah who comes in and says, stop that. Take that out. Take that out. Take that out. <clears throat> Who turned to Yahweh with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his might, according to the law of Moses. Nor after him did anyone arise like him. Josiah stood up like a pinhas and says, this is going to stop. Will you be a pinhas? Will you be a pinkus? Will you be a phineas? Whatever one connects with you. Will you be that man or woman that sees and says, I stop. I got to have a conversation. Either personally 
or because of what I see. Ezra started a movement. Ezra. Um, if you go back to Ezra, you find that the men of the leaders are doing it again. They done found women who were pagan and they are married. And you talk about a timetable, Jay. This had gone on for a while because they have whole families now. They have children and it's just gone on. Ezra is so bothered by this. It says in verse 2, For they have taken some of the daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so the holy seed is mixed with the people of these lands. Oh my goodness. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and, and rulers has been foremost in the trespass. So when I heard these things, I tore my garment. Why nobody else did that? Oh, you know, well, it's, I don't want to. Yeah. He says, no, this is terrible. And plucked out some of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with Jay. <laughs> He's been praying a lot. <laughs> Somebody pray for me. <laughs> Brandon, I don't got that many more now. Um, so when I heard this thing, I tore my garment and robe and plucked out some of my hair off my head and beard and sat down astonished. Oh, God, give us the vision. Give us your zeal and your heart that we can have your spirit. He was astonished when everybody else was numb. He was like, no, this can't be. I want to be sensitive to what God is sensitive to. I'm not there. I wish I was there. I'm not there. I'm getting there. I'm trying my best. But I want to be like, this is terrible. Instead of, yeah, you know, it's just, it's, he said, no, 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 no. I would not do that. This cannot be in our ministry. He had that. And verse 4 it says, Then everyone who trembled at the words of Elohim of Israel assembled to me. He started a whole movement. If you keep reading this story, everybody started getting around and is praying, and just from his zeal that says, This cannot be. Will you be that man? Will you be that woman? Or are you still saying to yourself, That ain't for me? <laughs> That's a nice story to read about. But I will not. I do not want to upset people. I've not been one to be like that. I will not confront in myself or others. If that is you, you stand or sit convicted as one who promotes the same activity. Say that once more louder. If you are one who stands idly and does not do anything after seeing What's happening? You are promoting the very activity that you disdain. I like to say, it's easy to say, I, am, I didn't do anything. Not realizing that was a confession. That convicted me. <laughs> and God says, yes, I know that. You didn't do anything. And that's why he came to the churches and says, I hold this against you. Your apathy and your, your, your unwillingness to move. Who is Ezra's grandfather? Great. Great grandfather. This is just a kind of fun fact. I thought I'd throw in this since we just talked about Ezra going, ah. <laughs> he has a lot of grandfathers, by the way. But she's guessing one. I'm just guessing Josiah. It could be. <laughs> That's a good guess. Anybody else want to guess? He had a couple. Would you be surprised to know that Pincus is his granddad? Yes. Would you believe that? How in the world, Jay, you asked the question, how did this get in the bloodline that now the same attitude that says this has to stop? Great, 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 great grandson says this has to stop. Wow. That'd be awesome to send that spirit on that line. Mm. We have the opportunity now to send that spirit. I wonder if the story was told throughout generations. I can't help but to imagine it was. It's too big of a story to miss. My daddy stopped. That's that covenant of peace. Hmm? That went to all his generations. That's what we're getting to at the end. 
That's exactly. Sorry, God sorry. says, I bless you. <laughs> Say again, Jack. Sorry if I read it. No, 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 please, because <laughs> that's the spirit that I want to sow. He says, because of what you did, it's going through all your generations. See, it might be scary to make that bold conversation with yourself and says, I need to change some things that's not right. It may be bold to approach someone and say, can you show me where I'm or let me talk to you because I don't know if this is feeling. And but God says, I see you, baby. I see you, honey. I see your daughter. I see you, son. And nobody else sees you, but I see you and I thank you and I will bless you. Nobody else has the power to bless you like I bless you. Thank you. I see you. You have that blessing waiting. Phineas rose from among the congregation, and we can and should too. We don't want to be like the ones in Jeremiah. It says, for the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. And from prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Are you among those who like to tell everyone they're doing great, but they're not? <laughs> Girl, you good. Man, you don't worry about it. And God says, that's not what I told you to tell them. No, I just want everybody to feel good. <laughs> peace, peace. Things will go well. He says, that wasn't the message. I don't know if you're going to share the scripture. I am. <laughs> There's one in Ezekiel 3, so they saw you repeat that says that if you saw a brother sinning, you know, and you said something, you won't be held accountable. But if you saw him sin and didn't say anything, that you are going to be held accountable for his sin. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good one. But also, where'd you get that? It's an Ezekiel screen. All right. Um, but also, thinking like what you're saying is that. You know, because there is so much going on in the world, so it is easy to say, like, we need to say something. But I think the point of your message is that it's not the message for, for the world. It's for people who claim to be with God. Right. Yeah, that's the heart of it. Because every scripture we've read have been to godly people in a godly community. Nothing we've read have been said, you're not talking to the world about what they're doing. He says, no, 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 no. We got enough to deal with right here. <laughs> we got enough things going on in our homes, in our communities, in our churches. Yes, absolutely. Matthew 18, 18 is a very popular, 18, 15. Moreover, if a brother sins against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you gain a brother. But if, if not, take with you one or two more that the mouth of two or three witnesses everywhere may be established. If he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen, a tax collector. This is a very clear pr process, but few I fear follow it. <laughs> It's so much easier to get advice in the name, to, to gossip in the name of getting advice and say, well, I got a situation. I just want to tell you, no, you just need to go talk to, is it about this person? Did you talk to them? Don't talk to me. Go talk, go tell the brother. Okay, if they still, okay, you saw the, ah, uh, well, don't just stand there. Do something. <laughs> I could have put that in there. You know, another fun fact, since you said that, Jay, I'm going to bring this out. It says he, he, he took the javelin and ran it through their body. But in the Hebrew, it's not just body. It was through the female genitalia. It was that intense. He says for the same, the same sense of the crime. I know, I didn't want to go there. Uh, <laughs> My version's not rated the same as your yeah. version. <laughs> go, to, go, to, go to the Hebrew. Um, so it says through the belly, and, it, and, it, and it's playing on words there. So anyhow. Yeah, we get it now. <laughs> Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual. Thank you, Leah. You who are spiritual. If you're not spiritual, he says, hold on, I need to get some stuff right first. <laughs> You who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. We have an obligation and a command to be our brother's keeper. First, we keep ourselves, then we're commanded to keep one another. 
If you see it, say it. Don't just stand there. What if you don't want to? I guess you don't have to. You don't want to. Sorry. Build the bridge. Get over it. <laughs> Here's your bridge. If you don't want to, Nate, I'm going to use the scripture you read in Ezekiel 3. When I say to, he says, Now I came to pass at the end of the seven days, the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, I've made a watchman. I made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, You shall surely die, and you give him no warning. So you said, Peace, peace, or you just kept quiet. You didn't give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. He sure will, but his blood I will require at your hand. <gasps> what? He did it wrong. Yes, but I gave you a word to speak. You're a watchman, and you did it. His blood is on your hand. He repeats that same thing again uh, just a few verses later. James 4 says, Therefore, to him who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, and this is why for leaders, um, we're given an account. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. <sighs> See, I don't want to be don't, put, don't give me no title for leader. That's some serious stuff. A lot of times we talk about leaders and wanting the 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 privilege or the the um, whatever comes with it, but the accountability. They said they watch over your souls as those who must give an account. God will ask an account from His leaders. I didn't do it, but you're the leader. I want an account from you. How are they doing? Why are they here? That's why he talked to the churches. Let them do so with joy, not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Don't make the job of the leader hard. He's like, I, give, I have to give an account as a parent, as a mother, as a father, as a teacher, as a shepherd, as all these. I have to give an account. We have to give an account. I'm going to come to a close here and say we need to mind our own business. We need to mind on um, business. To your point, Nayla, that you brought up a second ago, we read in 1 Corinthians, it says, But now I am writing you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed, or is an idolatry, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? Elohim judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. If we needed help to understand where our focus should be, Paul makes it clear in these words. I do not have to judge those on the outside. It's those inside the church. Why? Because we all agree to the same law. We all have the same king. We all run by the same rules. How can I turn to someone who does not operate under those same principles and judge them by something they don't even know, they don't even have and understand? How can you not observe Sabbath? How can, oh, I don't even, but we all agree to hold? It's much easier to say, brother and sister, we can judge those here. Purge the evil person from among you. Thought I saw him, okay. The blessing, Jay, as you alluded to, that follows. When you stand up like Pinhas and says, stop, he stood up among the congregation. If you can imagine hundreds that he was with, thousands, whoever, he says, I'm not going to let you guys this stagnation or just sitting here stop me. I got something to do. You got a question? Oh. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Pinas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them. Oh, how I want to be known to God as one who is zealous for his zeal. When you're zealous with his zeal, sometimes people may not get you, they may not understand you, and they may not share the same passion and energy you do, but Yahweh said, Thank you, somebody who understands my heart. Therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and his descendants after him, as we saw, a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. 
because he was zealous for his God. He was zealous for his Elohim and made atonement for the children of Israel. I don't have a summary, but I will repeat this last piece. Let it be known. Let it be known that you were zealous for your God. Let it be known your name, zealous for your God. Maybe nobody else knows it, but he says, oh, she, he is zealous for me. But nobody else sees it. I see it, he says. You're zealous and you're willing to stand up and be that penthouse and speak out. Had a hard conversations, both personally and interpersonally with our brothers and sisters.